give your phone number, right? Just put in a new name and a new email address. This is the update. We can we can take the one from last year, the age of sustainable development, or this year in addition to sustainability development. So far, they've just reached week three on this year. So, okay. we can sign up for this course, introduction to sustainable development here, and also the age of sustainable development down here. If you want to follow the course yourself as it goes you can sign up now and you can get some certificate if you want to pay fifty dollars but otherwise you can go here to the age of sustainable development okay. click on the age of sustainable development and go to the course okay so in the course we have video lectures quizzes reading materials and so on so recently uh, do you know a guy called Joseph Stiglitz? He won a Nobel Peace Prize. So there is a debate about the future of the education, and even a debate about do we need professors anymore, or lecturers, right? Can people just learn online from the best teachers in the world, right? So I can say that I'm not the best teacher in the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are other teachers in the world who are better than me. For example, Jeffrey Sachs, he has uh, the advisor to Barack Obama on sustainability, okay? Uh, he has a lot of experience working in uh, the uh, area and doing a lot of research in that area. So he is like the world expert in that area, right? And he also teaches in Columbia University. So he made this online course. So according to uh, Joseph Stiglitz, the future of education could be that you have the world expert, expert the best uh, person researcher in the world, or make some internet course, online course, and then the, in the university, the lecturer can use this course instead of using book, right? Usually they use a book or something like that, right? But they can use this course to teach the students. 
So we have one expert who makes uh, the course, the video course, and then we have other teachers who are uh, helping to teach the students this subject using this course as an aid. So we'll be using this course as an aid in this class for sustainability because he is an expert. So if you go in there, the video lectures, you can see that this is Jeffrey Sachs. You can take the course at video lectures. When you make a video course online, it shouldn't be a teacher teaching the class, it should be somebody sitting down and talking to the camera, right? So he makes the course like this. Okay. So uh, just now that you've logged in and signed up for this course, you can take it in your own time. And I'll, I'll tell you the parts which are more relevant to what we are studying. So we have readings and uh, he gives his book, for example, his book is for free, right? So here is his book. His book is What is Sustainable Development? And you can get the chapter one here if you go to readings, PDF file. Okay, then anyway, you can also download to the Kindle and some other readings here. So we're going to use this to help us to study about sustainability and sustainable development. So, first of all, let's do the introduction to sustainability. Development. Do you understand the word sustainable? What does it mean to sustain something? <coughs> Maintain. Maintain, right? If you're running, can you sustain 100% of your speed? Is that possible for a long time? No, you can't sustain your speed for a long time. But if you run very slowly, you jog, then you can sustain your speed. So when we're talking about sustainable development, we mean something which is something we can continue doing. Perhaps if we damage the environment, we use all our oil, we can run very quickly at the start. But can we sustain that? Maybe not, right? We run out of oil and run out of all the world's resources and then we start to go down, right? So this is not sustainable, this kind of thing. So we, talk, we hear politicians talking about sustainable growth, sustainable development, like this, looks like that. Okay. We're growing, the economy needs to grow because we have more people. Every year we have more people, so we have to have growth. If we don't have economic growth, or we are in trouble. So we want that growth to be sustainable. So we have three systems that we have to make sense of. The world economy, global society, and the Earth's environment. So sustainable development calls for socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable economic growth. So we are going to look at, in this area, we think about these questions. What causes economic growth? Why do we have poverty? And why does poverty continue? Actually, the last 10 years, the UN had some Millennium Development Goals, which was to reduce poverty <coughs> by so many million people. So they did quite well on this goal, especially in countries like China. Uh, people living on less than a dollar a day, the number of people living on less than a dollar a day uh, went down a lot. So what happens when billions of people are in, in connect, interconnected these days through the markets? 20 or 30 years ago, the financial markets, even the export, mar export markets were closed in some countries, like North Korea today. So just recently, in the last 30 years, we have more interconnected markets, technology, finance, and social networks. And is there a way that we can combine economic development and environmental sustainability. 
So every year the world population is rising by 75 to 80 million people. We can see that there has been a massive rise in life expectancy. Do you understand life expectancy? How long do you expect to live? How long do you expect to live? Until what age? 100? <laughs> that could be right because uh, Korea is a very high life expectancy, right? And also, we expect in the future that uh, the healthcare will all continue to improve. So it's uh, it's quite possible that you can live to 100. But what do you think the life expectancy was about 100 years ago? Yes, about less than that, maybe 50 or even in the 19th century, it was just 40 years old. Even in countries like Sweden, 45 or 50. But nowadays, in most countries, it's over 70. So there will be eight billion people by the 2020s and perhaps 9 billion by the early 2040s. Okay, so the world economy grows about 3 to 4 percent a year, but it's very unequal. The world economy is quite unequal. Distribution of income within and between countries. Which is the country with the highest inequality in the world? Oh, good guess though. Anybody else? What's the country with the highest income inequality? The biggest gap between the richest and poorest? China? China. Mm, no. The US? The US, yes. What's the second? China? Germany. So in the US and Germany we have quite a lot of people who earn a high salary. But also they have, in Germany until recently, they had no minimum wage. Right? In the US they have quite a small minimum wage. So Inside countries we also have a lot of inequality. You can hear Occupy Wall Street, they were complaining about 1% of the US owns a lot of the wealth, right? And 99% of the US owns less than half of the wealth. So we have these kind of challenges. In some countries, we have the poor people in poorer countries. They have not enough nutrition, health care is poor, not good shelter, and even drinking water and sanitation is not good. So we have quite a varied economy in the world. What about the environment? So we have uh, <coughs> In China, we have an issue with the fresh water. When I was in China, they were quite worried about the air and the water. You know, in 10 or 20 years. Already in Spain, some countries, they have to import water at some times of the year because they don't have enough water, drinking water. So they get, they even in Spain, Barcelona, they have to get ships to bring water from another country. Okay. So we have the chemistry of the ocean. We can see sometimes a lot of fish are dying mysteriously. People are not sure what happened to them. And habitat, do you understand habitat? Habitat means where does the species live? So in the Amazon jungle, a lot of species die every year that go extinct, right? They discover a lot of new species, but a lot of species go extinct. Do you know the dodo? That's a species, right? One type of animal. So we also have this carbon dioxide issue, so water, nitrogen and carbon is changing in the earth. So then we have uh, governance, do you understand the word govern? What does govern mean? What does the word govern mean? We have government, corporate governance, here we have governance, what does to govern mean? Kind of rule something? Govern means to rule or manage or control, right? So the government has these main functions. Social services such as healthcare and education. Infrastructure such as roads and ports. And power. Protection from crime and violence. We mentioned in the last class, right? These things. That like companies get this advantage. Promotion of basic science and technology. So often the government has to give the grant uh, if you watched the movie recently, Enigma, did you see that movie? Yes. 
Then the government gave the guy a grant during the war to make some one of the first computers, right? He made one of the first computers. Also in the US, the internet was discovered because the government was giving the money. For the army, the US military discovered the internet. They wanted to find a way to communicate it, right? So we also depend on the government for science and new technologies. And uh, they need to make regulations to protect the environment. So we have three, people have three basic rights according to the UN Declaration of Human Rights we mentioned before, which is uh, housing, shelter, clothing, and food, right? And then after this, the government provides all these, also provides these kind of services. So multinational companies are often the most powerful actors. So when I was in the US, I met a skeptical guy, and it was the election time, and he said, it doesn't matter who wins the election, Barack Obama or uh, the other candidate, George Bush, right? Because he said, the Republican Party or the Democratic Party wins the election. It's not important. Anyway, the corporations control the country. They are very powerful, right? So we can see some people think like that, well, that not, might not be entirely true, it might be a bit of an exaggeration, right? But we can see that these days the companies are very powerful. In Korea, are the companies powerful? Samsung, LG, the Chables? Totally. Hmm? Korean students, what do you think? Are your corporations quite powerful? Are corporations in Korea almost like their own little country? Yes. Mm -hmm. How are they like their own little country? They have their own golf courses, right? Their own facilities. They pay, look after the workers and so on, right? Uh, it's almost like a little country sometimes the companies. But they should obey the law, respect the environment, and help communities, I said the last time, right? As well as the government. The, government. the uh, companies also have a responsibility then to do those things. Because the companies couldn't just exist and just forget about all these things that they get the advantages of, right? If the company is going to be like a little country, then it should also be Providing these things for its uh, citizens. Okay. So, on the the problem is that companies often carry out bribery. We understand bribery yes. to change the regulations so they they can damage the environment or they can do something. Change the tax policy so they don't pay much tax. There's a big debate in the U.S. at the moment about. Uh, companies paying very little tax, also in the UK. I think they found that one year a company like Starbucks paid no tax in the UK, right? Something like that, something ridiculous. Some big multinational and they paid no tax because they, whatever way they did their accounting or they made some tax policy in their favor. So this is kind of tax evasion, money laundering and environmental damage. Do you understand money laundering? get money from illegal activities and put it into the company. So we had some cases in Switzerland and other areas where they were taking the other banks, they were taking the money of some drug dealers or that kind of thing and recycling money. So let's check these questions, so discuss with your partner. What is the current world population and what is sustainable development?